Hey, it's Robert here. I'm the owner of Crossroads Properties. We're a private asset management company. We deal in real estate, single family and multifamily housing. And today has been a huge mistake on my part in a number of different ways. One of them's financially. Number two, I should have been better prepared, but I'm going to tell you all about it. You know, it makes you go Always go back and think about the other times where you've had a screw up and thankfully this was a huge faux pas not very detrimental not very painful so to speak however I've had some very bad experiences thank God I make far more correct or right or positive or profitable decisions than I do bad ones however this one will stick out in the record books for a while so let me go into it and tell you all about it. Okay, so this is what has happened. We've been doing the garage conversion. It's a small detached garage, less than 600 feet converted it into a one bedroom house. We're like down to last 20% to get done. Come along real good. This has been the first time that I've ever done a project of this magnitude start to finish. Okay, I've done every component of the conversion as one, you know, like put it in a commode. I've done that in a place, you know, put it in a bathtub, put it in a washer dryer hookup. I've done all those things but I've never done it at one place from start to finish, okay? So, we got all this going on and everything. Unfortunately, we missed the deadline for the person to move in. They already put a deposit down two months ago. So then, I'm kind of feeling rushed and everything. Well, the guy on the $9,500 double wide, we made a huge push on getting it ready, finally got to the point where, um, he was supposed to move in, something happens, backs out of the deal, and so then we're back on the garage. Well, here's first of the month coming up. The gal paid rent uh, two days ago. She said, hey, I'm ready and everything. And I was like, well, I'll have you a place for you to be able to lay your head at. I don't know if it's all gonna be done. That's great, we'll take it. Now, double wide trailer's back on. That guy was moving in on the first as well. So, with all that being said, the double wide has two things that are wrong still with it. I got a light to fix and it needs a refrigerator. We went and bought one today, beautiful. Side by side up top, freezer drawer on the bottom. Huge bonehead play on my part. And it has been Three weeks since I have fully taken a day off without doing any kind of work. And so I go get this really nice refrigerator and everything, and it's the wrong size. This is a huge bonehead play on my part. I got the width right. The depth, it's 8 inches, 10 inches too wide. So I have this to buy tool, those. This tool right here is worth its weight in gold. Look at that. That thing right there just paid for itself because we dropped a screw in a bathroom sink, went down, and had to fish it back out. Boom, less than 10 seconds, this is out. Otherwise, could have been hours messing around with a piece of wire. We got this one used. I'm gonna have to buy another one used and get it in there tomorrow. It is what it is, and it happens like that, folks. What has happened or what's been going on with me is, is that with working so much, not taking any time off, I am at a point where I am stressed. I'm about up to here, maybe up to here. I don't know, but way, you know, too much. And so after that, it cost me the price of the refrigerator. I can't return it. $50 in labor that I paid somebody to help me. And you know what I said? I'm going to go home. I'm not going to do anything. And we're going to take the rest of the day off. And... If it's a day or two longer that these people have to move in, so be it. If I got to pay for a hotel for them to stay at, so be it. But I need to do something for myself, you know. Some people will tell you, oh, you always need to quit at clock. You need to do this. You only need to work four days a week, five days a week, whatever it is. I don't know. But guess what? There's nobody that is me except for me. Profound, huh? 
And what I'm saying by that is, is that I go till I can't, and then I make some adjustments, and then I go again, all right? And the thing about it is, is that it's so funny that people are like, oh, you need to stop, you need to smell the roses and everything. And I'm like, you need to put it in fifth gear, you need to hustle, you need to build some reserves, you need to make some investments so you can enjoy later on and everything like that. Well, you know, I have no problem with somebody that doesn't invest, that doesn't want a secure financial future. I, I got no problem with that. If that's your gig, that's cool, okay? I don't like the results that people that live like that get, okay? I'm very comfortable with the decisions that I make, all right? And you will find that it's the more hustle and try to do something that makes you more of an elitist, okay? And just the same as that, you know, less than, I think, 4% of the United States makes over, what is it, $250,000, $300,000, okay? So if you start putting yourself into that type of pay bracket to where you're making that level of income, you're separating yourself from the population. Okay, and one or two things is going to happen if you're hanging out or you're spending time with people that do not share the same mindset, they will either elevate to your level or they're going to go by the wayside if you stay true to the course. Now, the other thing that can happen is, is that you can start going downhill. It's very possible. It's much easier for you to go to somebody else's level down is for them to come to your level. And I'm just here to tell you, folks. You start talking, you know, it was like the, I was in New Orleans a couple months ago, and we got into a Uber, I was talking with that guy and everything, and then we, you know, within five, ten minutes, we were talking about investments, what he's doing with all his money and everything, because the Uber's on the side, he's a uh, welder full time, and he started telling me where his money, everything like that. Amazingly enough, we go to this seminar, and there's a guy talking and he starts saying, you know, when I'm meeting new people and everything, 30 minutes within an hour, I'm figuring out what it is they do for a living, they do any kind of investing and everything like that. Absolutely hilarious. That's the same thing I was doing with that guy because that's what I do, okay? I am all about financial independence. I am all money and I love hearing what other people are doing and their philosophy on investing. And the thing about it is, is that if you're around people that aren't of that mindset, they're going to have to go somewhere else if you stay to the course because they're different. And it causes them to look at themselves. And there's nobody that you're going to ever say, do you think that it is bad for you to have emergency money in savings? Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever tell you no. I think that's a bad idea. Now, how many of them actually do it? very small portion. So it causes them, because they're always around you, it causes them to take a look at their own behavior. What ends up happening, they gotta get away. They gotta get around other people. They gotta get around other people that are living paycheck to paycheck. They gotta get around other people that don't see a future. They gotta get around other people that don't see past tomorrow. Because that's how they live their life. Just the same as, you, you, you can't be a sober person and hanging out in the bar, okay? One or two things is gonna happen. Either you're gonna drink, or everybody else in the bar is gonna end up leaving and you're gonna to have to be obnoxious with them, okay? Birds of the feather flock together. That's all there is to it, okay? And it's very difficult that if you're this passionate about something that there's nothing better than when you wake up in the morning and you see that your net worth has grown, that you've made money, that you've been paid dividends, that you collected rent, whatever it is, that you've had some type of compounding interest or some type of appreciation that has occurred with an asset that now is worth more than it was 24 hours ago, you're going to be around other people that are of the same mindset. Therefore, Take care of yourself. Make sure you measure that refrigerator. Don't screw up like old Robbo and just kind of wing it and everything. Make sure, you know. Normally, I'm on top of my game with these sort of things. It's been a rough last couple of weeks. It's time to chill. So, I'm about to have a cup of coffee, watch some YouTube, do some mindless activities, probably read a book in the recliner. Have a great day.